Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's lesson where our essential question will be why is North Korea considered a menace to America and civilization? That will be your essential question that you write across the top and everything we learn in this unit of study is going to help to answer that question. Uh, I am going to let you know right now, I'm going to give you a lot of detail on this. Uh, it's not necessarily important for you to write down every detail. I'm going to tell a story, and at different points along the way, I will pause this presentation and tell you what the most important parts of the story are uh, for you to write down in your notes. So uh, this is going to be kind of a high school level of detail, but I don't expect you to write down a high school level of detail in your notes. So I will talk you through that as we go. Your first essential question on the left side is going to be, what is the historical background? In other words, how did we get here? What is the backstory? Um, and it's a very interesting backstory, uh, and there's a lot of detail to it, so I'm going to do this over a series of lessons, over a series of days. Um, but we're going to start with World War II. And keep in mind, in World War II, uh, in the Pacific theater, uh, the United States was facing off against Japan and towards the end of the war the United States was winning and obviously we won World War II so um, but there was an aftermath that is extremely interesting first of all you need to know Korea itself was once a proud independent and unified empire for centuries so Korea this is funny. Attentive staff, social committee meeting happening right now in the library. I'm sure that was very interesting to you. So Korea was a proud, independent, and unified country for centuries, but it also, because the Japanese were nearby and the Chinese were nearby, always struggled um, with invasions from the outside and being dominated by foreign powers. So that has always been an issue for the Koreans. Um, from 1910 to 1945, Korea was invaded, occupied, oppressed, and controlled by the Japanese Empire. Now keep in mind, World War II started in 1939, but building up to that, Japan slowly invaded all the countries around it, took over a lot of their land, more or less enslaved their people, and took resources from them. Uh, Korea was one of those countries that was controlled and dominated by Japan. So the Koreans had a strong interest in Japan losing World War II. So as World War II was coming to an end, um, the United States dropped two at atomic bombs on Japan, and after those bombs were dropped, it became extremely clear that Japan at some point was going to have to surrender um, because they did not want to continue having atomic bombs dropped on them. Those are the only two atomic bombs that have ever been dropped in warfare in the history of the world up until this point. Um, but after those bombs were dropped, the former USSR, which we now know as Russia, uh, you, the USSR was bigger than Russia, but when you th see USSR, think Russia, uh, realized if we don't get into this right now, we're not going to get any land for ourselves, we're not going to have any leverage, we're not going to have any advantage after the war. So the USSR invaded Korea from the north, and the United States invaded Korea uh, from the south. And by invade, I mean kicking out the Japanese, you know, removing the Japanese army, defeating the Japanese army, and gaining control of that land. Um, for the Allied forces. And keep in mind, in World War II, the USSR was an ally of the United States in defeating Japan and Germany. So when World War II was over, uh, at the northern part of Korea was under Russian control. Remember, the USSR and Russia, in this case, are kind of interchangeable. And the southern part was under American control. So if you look at this map over here, the areas you see in red were basically under Russian control and the areas you see in green were basically under American control. Uh, this picture up here shows what it looked like in Korea when it was occupied by the Japanese army. 
So the country was split essentially in half in the belief it would eventually be unified under one government. At this point, the Russians and the Americans were still talking nice with each other and basically said, yeah, we'll, we'll unify the country eventually. Right now, we just need to kind of solidify the areas that we control and make sure that they're stable, which I was kind of ironic because in, in the past, the northern part of Korea was actually part of one Korean kingdom and the southern part of Korea was part of a different Korean kingdom. Um, so there, there are some parallels there in Korean history, but I'm not going to go into that level of detail with you right now. So uh, I am about to pause this, however, and give you an explanation of what you should know from this slide. And I'm also about to change the slide. So our next left side question is what happened after World War II? We know that Korea is divided, the Russians control the North, the Americans more or less control the South, but what, what happened in the immediate aftermath of World War II? First thing you need to know is that the northern part of Korea um, was organized under a government, and of course the Russians oversaw this, the Soviets oversaw this, and it was called the DPRK. And a lot of times you'll refer to North Korea as the DPRK, which stands for the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. And it was placed under the control of Kim Il-sung, who instituted a communist dictatorship. And one thing you need to know is after World War II, um, the Soviets, who were communist, were in a, essentially a worldwide struggle with the United States, which represented uh, free elections and capitalism. And, that's a, we, we could talk about that if you'd like. Um, it became something called the Cold War, and this was one of the first battle lines of the Cold War. The southern part of Korea was named the ROK, or the Republic of Korea. And both the DPRK and the ROK basically felt it was their right and duty to unify the entire Korean peninsula. Uh, peninsula being one of those words we learned about physical geography. So the USSA, excuse me, the USA and USSR, which we now today pretty much just call Russia, were allied during World War II, but after World War II they quickly became adversaries um, because of their very different political and economic systems. Uh, communist countries were essentially a dictatorship that maintained total control over their populations, and uh, the United States is based on democracy and what we call free market capitalism. Um, and I can have a conversation with you by pressing pause if you'd like me to, but just know that it was basically a conflict between two systems that were very, very different, and they were both struggling literally for, for world domination. And Korea was just one front in that larger confrontation which became known as the Cold War. It was called the Cold War, and it was a Cold War because um, in most cases, bullets were never fired. Uh, the border between North and South Korea was a front line in this cold conflict. But of course, what we're about to hear about is how this cold conflict became hot. And there are four people I want you to know about in terms of this period of history. And we're going to talk about them on the next slide. So who were the leaders after World War II? It's definitely important that you know who these are, and we're going to have you put that as a left side question. Uh, and first we'll talk about the southern side, the Republic of Korea. Uh, the Republic of Korea was led by a gentleman by the name of Syngman Rhee. Uh, he became president of the Republic of Korea, and he was a very, very, very strong anti-communist. And the President of the United States at the time, who was President at the end of World War II after Franklin Delano Roosevelt died, Harry Truman, uh, he is the man who decided to drop the atomic bombs on Japan, uh, he was President of the United States in the immediate aftermath of World War II and during the Korean War, which we're going to be learning about. Uh, the DPRK, the North Korea, was led by Kim Il-sung and he was chairman of the North Korean Workers' Party, which in other words was the Communist Party of North Korea. Uh, he had a dictatorship and he maintained total and absolute control 
um, over his population. Uh, he hung out in the Soviet Union during World War II, and the Soviets installed him as the leader of North Korea after World War II. And Marshal Joseph Stalin was the premier of the Soviet Union, uh, both during World War II and in the aftermath and during the Korean War. So you need to know these four men who were the leaders and the decision makers uh, during the Korean War. Uh, and later on, I'm going to throw in uh, Mao Zedong, the leader of China. But for now, you need to know that the South over here was um, the decision makers were Syngman Rhee and Harry Truman. And in the North, the decision makers were Kim Il-sung and Joseph Stalin. Now, Kim Il-sung is the grandfather of Kim Jong-un, the current leader of North Korea. So I'll throw you that little tidbit. Uh, but for now, we're going to go ahead and call this the end of the first lesson. I'm sure you're going to have some questions for me, um, and I'll be happy to answer those. And I also want you to write a summary at the bottom of your notes. It should be at least three sentences because we've had three left side questions. Um, and that summary should tell you the most important details uh, that you have learned from today's lesson and presentation. And with that, Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off until next time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.